A botanist's discovery of an extraordinary plant launches him into the spotlight, but its bloodthirsty nature soon becomes too much to handle. On the 23rd day of the month of September, in an early year of a decade not too long before our own, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence, and this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in the seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places. In downtown Skid Row, Crystal, Ronette, and Chiffon, a harmonious chorus, weave through the streets warning people about the impending dangers that lie within a little shop of horrors. Their voices resonate as they pass by Mushnik's flower shop. Inside is Mr. Mushnik, the owner, engrossed in reading a newspaper. Continuing their performance, the trio makes their way down to the basement, where Seymour, the clumsy botanist, falls while grabbing something off a shelf. As Seymour busies himself with cleaning up the mess, a radio broadcast is discussing an unexpected solar eclipse that had occurred last week. Across the street, Audrey, the florist, makes her way to work with a fresh black eye. Mushnik greets her sarcastically, noting that her tardiness doesn't matter, since there haven't been any customers anyway. His attention is drawn to Audrey's black eye, and he suggests that her boyfriend may not be a good person. Just then, the botanist bursts into the room and falls, causing a shower of pots flying everywhere. As Seymour and Audrey clean up the mess, Majnik reflects on his circumstances and complains about the sorry state of his business and neighborhood. He then notices three urchins loitering outside the shop and drives them away. However, Ronette clarifies that they weren't loitering with Chiffon interjecting that they're on a split shift at school. When Mushnik questions how they plan on improving their lives, Crystal declares that such an option isn't available in Skid Row. As she says this, the residents of Skid Row break into a lively song, expressing their daily struggles of working tirelessly for people uptown, only to return to their dismal lives in downtown Skid Row. The chorus joins in, harmonizing with the crowd. In a nearby alley, Audrey's voice sings a heartfelt tune, shedding light on the ruthless men that are common in Skid Row. Inside the flower shop, Seymour's voice fills the air, sharing his unfortunate upbringing as an orphan with limited opportunities. He dreams of escaping the unfortunate town, though it seems that he and the rest of its residents are trapped there. As Seymour's song reaches its peak, Audrey harmonizes with them. Together, they march towards the same street corner, as they express their desire to break free from the shackles of the miserable life at Skid Row. After a day of lousy business, Mushnik announces that he's closing the store for good. Unwilling to lose their jobs, Seymour and Audrey join forces to propose a new strategy that could save the shop. The florist suggests showcasing a unique and exotic plant that would attract customers. The botanist disappears briefly and returns with a peculiar plant in his hands. The plant, named Audrey II, is a species that he can't quite identify. Mojnik scoffs at the idea, dismissing the notion that a peculiar plant could attract customers. However, their conversation is interrupted when a man enters the shop, immediately drawn to the unique plant on display. At the customer's behest, Seymour shares a strange occurrence that took place during a recent solar eclipse. Seymour recounts how he was at a flower shop during the eclipse, searching for unusual plants, but he found nothing out of the ordinary. Just as he was about to leave, the eclipse occurred. When the sun re-emerged, Seymour noticed Audrey too among the others, seemingly appearing out of nowhere. As the customer prepares to leave, expressing gratitude for the story, both Audrey and Seymour feel disheartened that their plan had failed. Surprisingly, the customer abruptly decides to purchase some roses, reasoning that he was already in the shop. To their astonishment, customers begin pouring in, their curiosity piqued by Audrey too. Despite the homeless people lingering by the window, the customers are showing interest in the unique plant and, in the process, are buying flowers. Mushnik eagerly attends to their needs and even encourages them to return and examine the interesting plant further. The owner's excitement over the success of Audrey II's exhibition is palpable. He invites his employees for dinner to celebrate, but Audrey declines, mentioning that she already has a date. When Mushnik expresses his disapproval of her boyfriend, the florist defends him, citing his financial stability and limited options available to her before leaving. The owner's attention then turns to Audrey too, which he notices is starting to wither. Concerned about their money-making plant, he cancels dinner and implores Seymour to take care of it. The botanist, obediently following Mushnik's instructions, heads down to the basement, where he discreetly observes Audrey through the window as she prepares for her date. Lost in thought, Seymour sings about how to revive Audrey too. As he ponders various methods, he accidentally pricks his finger on a rose stem. Surprisingly, the plant reacts to the blood. Intrigued, Seymour cautiously feeds it a few more drops before retiring for the night, unaware of the remarkable growth spurt that's occurring. The following day, with a bigger and healthier Audrey too, Seymour joins a radio program that features oddities. Amid the weird antics of the DJ, he follows through on their plan of advertising the flower shop, using Audrey too as an attraction. As the radio broadcast continues, Majnik listens in the flower shop. When Audrey shows up with her injured arm in a sling, the owner expresses his concern once again. 
warning her about her questionable boyfriend. With the broadcast over, Majnik goes home disappointed in Audrey, and Crystal agrees with the sentiments. The florist shares her fears of leaving her boyfriend, afraid of the repercussions. Ronette comments that Audrey should find someone else who can protect her, and Crystal suggests Seymour, the kind-hearted botanist. However, Audrey believes she's unworthy of someone like Seymour and enters her apartment. As the urchins walk away, Chiffon remarks on Audrey's low self-esteem. Inside her apartment, Audrey daydreams and sings about her admiration for the botanist. She envisions a life as a modern housewife, far from the struggles of Skid Row. On a nearby rooftop, the chorus observes and sings about the dramatic transformation in Seymour's life. They highlight how he's now being hailed as a genius botanist. Meanwhile, inside his own home, Seymour tends to Audrey too, allowing the plant to drain him of his blood, unaware of the dangerous consequences ahead. The following day, amid the bustling flower shop and the ever-growing Audrey too, the botanist finds himself literally drained and struggling to keep up with his other responsibilities. As he and Audrey hurriedly arrange flowers for an overlooked order, she expresses concern that Moshnik is too demanding of Seymour. However, the botanist assures the florist that he's grateful to his boss for giving him a life outside the orphanage. Audrey insists that he should raise his expectations, especially now that he's experiencing success. She proposes to accompany him shopping for new clothes. Excited, Seymour suggests tonight, but the florist declines, stating she already has plans. Elsewhere, Orin, Audrey's vicious dentist boyfriend, is heading to his clinic while singing about his disturbing enjoyment for causing pain. He remembers that his mother encouraged him to pursue dentistry, using his talent for inflicting agony as a means to make money. Over time, his exposure to nitrous oxide or laughing gas evolved into dependent use. Later that evening, Orin arrives at the flower shop, insistent on entering. When Seymour protests that they're closed, Audrey emerges and introduces Orin as her boyfriend. The botanist witnesses firsthand the mistreatment the florist endures with her harsh partner, before the couple eventually leaves. Dejected, Seymour enters the shop and confides in Audrey too, expressing his frustration that Audrey deserves a better life. As he prepares to lock up for the day, the giant plant starts to wilt, and Seymour pleads with it to allow him some time to recover. Unexpectedly, Audrey too's smooth R&B voice resonates through the shop, singing a seductive tune demanding blood. The hungry plant promises Seymour fame and fortune in exchange for a constant supply of fresh human blood. Initially hesitant, Seymour's resolve wavers when he witnesses Orin mistreating Audrey. Soon, the botanist joins a dark duet with Audrey too, singing about Orin's demise and to use the merciless man as plant food. The next day, inside Orin's clinic, Arthur, a masochistic patient, eagerly waits for his treatment. Meanwhile, Seymour enters the clinic with a sinister agenda. When Orin fails to derive pleasure from hurting Arthur, he kicks him out. Turning his attention to Seymour, the dentist hopes to find satisfaction in inflicting pain upon him instead. To maximize the experience, he admits to using laughing gas recreationally and dons his nitrous oxide contraption. As it powers, the nitrous oxide is too effective and Orin struggles to operate the device. Determined to accomplish his plan to end the dentist, Seymour draws his gun, prompting the dentist to turn off the contraption. However, the device breaks, causing Orin to asphyxiate from uncontrollable laughter. In the dentist's final moments, the botanist reveals that the mistreatment of Audrey is the reason for his demise. Moments later, Seymour drags Orin's lifeless body to the back alley of the flower shop. There, he prepares it to serve as the bloodthirsty plant's sustenance. While he prepares for the gruesome act with an axe, Majnik arrives, inadvertently witnessing the macabre scene. Horrified, Majnik runs away before witnessing Seymour feeding the prepared meal to Audrey too. The next day, Seymour, racked by guilt, pays a visit to Audrey's apartment to inquire about the police presence. The florist reveals that Orin has been reported missing and the authorities are suspicious of foul play. Troubled, she seeks solace in the building's courtyard, where she admits to secretly wishing for Orin's misfortune. Seymour expresses concern for the troubled woman and suggests that she deserves to be with someone better. However, the florist, burdened by her past and filled with self-doubt, believes that her history makes her unworthy of a decent partner. Seymour reassures her that he's always held her in high regard, regardless of her past. Then, the botanist sings a heartfelt tune about his understanding and acceptance of her. Audrey joins in, sharing her past struggles and how the absence of a father figure led her into unhealthy relationships. Their duet culminates in a kiss and the declaration that Seymour is now her man. Joyful, Seymour returns home. However, Majnik is waiting for him, wearing a grave expression. The owner confronts the botanist, revealing his knowledge of the horrifying acts 
Seymour committed out of love for Audrey. Upstairs, Audrey too unleashes a chilling song, warning Seymour that his dreams of a future with Audrey are slowly slipping away. Meanwhile, Seymour panics and he confesses the disposing of Orin, who was already dead before he committed the gruesome act. Mushnik, alarmed, draws his gun in response, declaring that they're going to the police. As the two exit the shop, the owner offers Seymour a deal, his freedom in exchange for Audrey too. Unbeknownst to Mushnik, Audrey too, with its gaping mouth, is giving Seymour another option. When asked what to feed the sensational plant, Seymour slowly walks his boss closer to its gaping mouth, and the eerie chorus intensifies their chant of supper time. Curious, Mushnik turns around and is abruptly swallowed by the ravenous plant. Some time passes and Seymour finds himself overwhelmed with business proposals and interview requests. His involvement in Audrey 2's existence has turned him into a local celebrity. The media and public are captivated by his story, and Seymour's life takes an unexpected turn as he's flooded by fame and attention. Soon, the botanist is swept by a crowd of reporters into the flower shop. As Seymour composes himself, he's startled by the sight of Audrey 2 towering above him. He's then bombarded with questions by a TV crew that's already set up, waiting for him. While the reporter speaks, Audrey 2 collapses in the background. The plant's insatiable hunger and the consequences of feeding it on live television overwhelm Seymour, turning him hysterical. He flees to a nearby alley, seeking solace. Concerned, Audrey follows him, trying to soothe his distress. The florist informs him that the TV crew will be returning the next day with a substantial sum of money. Hearing this, the botanist sees an opportunity for escape from Skid Row. With a surge of confidence, he proposes marriage to Audrey, suggesting that they use the TV money to start a new life together. She accepts, and they hastily make plans to get married at City Hall that night. As Audrey rushes off to prepare, Seymour hurries back to his home to gather his belongings. Carefully tiptoeing past the insatiable Audrey too, he hopes to make a quick escape. However, just as he reaches the door, Audrey too's voice demands on being fed. Seymour offers to fetch meat from a local butcher to satisfy Audrey too's voracious appetite. Reluctantly, the plant agrees, and Seymour sets off on his errand. Unbeknownst to Seymour, Audrey too seizes an opportunity while he's away. It maneuvers its way to the phone and calls Audrey, hoping to lure her to the flower shop. Intrigued, the florist enters the shop, unaware of the danger that awaits her. As she steps into the shop, Audrey too begins to sing an upbeat melody about supper time, and its sinister intentions become increasingly clear. With its tendrils, the hungry plant ensnares Audrey. In a moment of horror, the botanist arrives just in time to witness the gruesome scene before him. Tragically, Seymour manages to freeze Bride from the clutches of Audrey too, but her injuries are fatal. She takes her final breath in Seymour's arms, expressing a bittersweet wish to be fed to the sinister plant, hoping it would grow even bigger to give the botanist the success he deserves. She believes that by becoming a part of the plant, they'll always be together, and finding solace in the idea of existing away from Skid Row. With a heavy heart, Seymour fulfills Audrey's final request, carrying her lifeless body towards Audrey too. Like a twisted wedding march, he tenderly places his bride into the waiting maw of the insatiable plant. Distraught, Seymour flees from the flower shop and races up a building, consumed by thoughts of ending his own life. However, as he reaches the rooftop, he encounters a man who holds a miniature version of Audrey too. The man reveals that he took a cutting from the original plant, and within a matter of days, it's grown into a separate entity. The thought of having little Audrey twos all over America terrifies Seymour, and when the plant gives him a sinister smile, he dashes back to the shop and confronts Audrey too. Once its plan of world conquest is found out, it sings, revealing its true evil nature. In a desperate attempt to end Audrey too, Seymour pulls out a gun and fires at the plant. Unfortunately, the bullets have no effect. It continues its rampage, tearing through the flower shop, so Seymour fights, but his efforts are in vain. As the chaos unfolds, Audrey too eventually overpowers Seymour, engulfing him in its massive jaws. The chorus, witnessing the tragic event, sings of the repercussions that follow. Audrey too's insidious plan of spreading and dominating takes hold, as the plants continue to grow and multiply. Soon, they become unstoppable forces, rendering weapons and human resistance futile. In a grim conclusion, the chorus's initial warning of a little shop of horrors proves tragically accurate, as the consequences of Seymour's ill-fated encounter with Audrey 2 unfold. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.